Hello again world, um, I will be continuing to part two of a first love story. I'm not quite sure how many parts it's going to be depending on how much I have to read or how fast I have to read um, and never rate. Uh, so picking up where the first one left off. Uh, the boy and the girl, they left for summer vacation of seventh grade and it was a typical summer day for the boy and it was on a fateful Sunday after uh, Sunday morning and he was washing the dishes and uh, all of a sudden the phone rang and to his surprise and astonishment it was the girl uh, you couldn't believe what was running through his mind uh, at this moment. The thrill, the excitement, the joy. Just the fact that she called him, uh, he must have thought that he had to have made some kind of impression for her to miss him to give him a call. And uh, he was pretty much bouncing off of the walls. He really couldn't contain himself. Um, they talked for quite a good while of their daily morning routines. And it was kind of funny uh, for them, the stories that they've shared. And he was naive uh, at least we would call him naive up to this point being that uh, they were both in seventh grade uh, was that around somewhere between 14 15 years old um, and at this point he figured that it would be his only chance to tell her how he really felt and he told her that he loved her um, and loved her since the day that they first met and of course it was to be expected that she went silent in fact they both did not sure uh, what to say to each other and then they both said their goodbyes um, needless to say he kind of felt like an ass then um, of what he did and what happened after that um, beginning in eighth grade till his senior year in high school the only thing that he could have done was to adore her from afar after that cursed phone call or so he likes to believe her attitude towards him were very clear she began to ignore him giving him the cold shoulder uh, everything that he did during his entire high school years was done with her in mind each year around Valentine's Day he would get a rose or a carnation in 10th grade he bought her a white rose and wrote a small poem uh, it wasn't much but it was true and sincere it was her name and won't you be my valentine if loving you is a crime then i am forever confined of course according to these days standards that was pretty cheesy of the guy don't you think it turns out that she wasn't there that day to accept his token of affections. He only wonders and ponders if she knew what he was planning and that he was planning on giving her those items. 
So he gave them to her sister, uh, the poem and the flowers, for her to give to the uh, girl of interest. Now, uh, this is a sad story uh, from the main one that happened to the boy. When he got his rose for the girl that year, he chose a white one to symbolize her beauty, her purity, and innocence. And when he got the rose, he felt that it costed too much, it was already half budded, and they took the jar away and wrapped it up in tissue paper because he didn't pay the extra 5 to $10 for the jar. Um, and when he went to pick it up, he wanted to get a card and printed on it a young rose for a young lady who will blossom into a beautiful woman. And needless to say that he wasn't surprised. The lady at the counter took the card, took a pen, and just wrote the quote up there with a cheap pen and her sloppy handwriting. And he was just thinking, what a piss poor job, and he's actually paying for this. Hmm. And he even had to pay for the card. Damn it. <laughs> he thought things like that would be professionally done, or something along those lines, since it was a floral shop. Now, he had a friend who went to the marketplace, such as Walmart, Kmart, Harris Teeter, to get a rose, and it was bigger, better looking, still unbudded, and cheaper. And so his conclusion was that the florist is too damn overrated, too damn expensive, shitty service, and it sucked, and so did its workers. Or at least the one that he went to, anyways. Back to main story. So that same year, his unquenchable flame, unable to be at ease, calls him to be up nightly. <laughs> one night, the thought of her on his mind was so intense and so unbearable the words just started to accumulate in his head. Soon, what emerged from that void in the mind came to be known as the poem, Her Name, at 2 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. And that night, he had a strange experience. He was locked in a subconscious dream where it seemed as if he was awake but in a dream state, he was aware of where he was and what was around him, but he felt like he couldn't move, he couldn't wake up, and he was unable to speak. Every time he tried to move, it was like he was pinned down and covered by some force just keeping him down and holding him back. Every word that he tried to say, his teeth was clenched, trying to speak, but he could feel the pressure of his teeth grinding as if any more pressure would have caused it to snap and broken into his enamels. Not fun or pleasurable, he thought to himself, but being in that dream state, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know what caused it, perhaps too much on his mind, perhaps too much stress, or any other causes. Yet, he decided the only thing that he could do was to just lie there. So he tried to relax 
and focus himself and what he decided to do was to just think about her and not stress or try to speak or say anything. It was then that the words came into his mind and I guess I'll start with uh, part three on this.